Right, welcome back everybody. Today you join me with me, Astra G. It's the 2004 1.8 Ecotech. We've had the engine management light come up and I've plugged it into the diagnostics tool and it's coming up with a few codes all relating back to the O2 sensor, Lambda sensor at the front here. So we'll go inside. I'll show you what codes I'm getting up. I've got a couple of uh, good genuine second hand ones that I know that are working that I've got off a friend that breaks these cars. So we're going to replace it out for one of them and uh, hopefully we can clear these codes and the light should go off and then we're back to running as we should be so let's get inside the car right then so we're in the car now and what you have to do is you put your ignition on and your obd is in here and what we're using today is the top don so we've just got to wait for this to load up. I will do the scan and then uh, we'll see what codes we're getting. And hopefully once we've changed the sensors, I say I've got a couple here. I've got one there and uh, I've got this one here. I'm probably going to go with this one first because it looks uh, fairly new, this one. It looks like it's done a lot of work. So we'll go with that one first. Cup of tea for the job. Happy days. So right then, I'll just try and get that light off the screen. So we're going to go for a scan. Let that do its thing. It's just reading all the data now from the vehicle. Right, so it took a few minutes there. So what we've got is we've got voxel there. So we'll hit the voxel button. Just like that. And that will connect now to my OBD port. So it's just connecting via Bluetooth. Right, so we'll hit automatic search. And it comes up with Astra or Sephira. So we want Astra. That's fine. That's just all the VIN numbers and all that. So we're going to go for a manual select. And we're going to do Z18XE for the engine codes. Otherwise, if I clicked automatic, it'll do a full scan of the car, and it takes about 10 minutes to do that. So we only want to scan what we know, what we've got issue with. So I've done a full scan before, and everything else is clear. So that's fine. Uh, diagnostic trouble codes, read fault codes, and uh, see, it's all brought all these up, and um, these are all relating back to the O2 sensor. So you've got O2 sensor incorrect signal o2 heater circuit open bank one sensor one bank one sensor one is the sensor that's in the engine bay on the catalytic converter not the one that's actually under the car so that's sensor two the one under the vehicle so sensor one is the one up top front there by the engine uh, so we've got po140 po135 p0030 p0170 and P0130, and all of them lean to, lean, I'm reading it off there, look, lean exhaust. All of them point to the O2 sensor circuit. It says down there, O2 sensor, one circuit open, O2 sensor. So what we're gonna do is I say, uh, change them. I could have bought a new sensor. I did look online, they're about 60 pounds. So for the sake of it, I'll give 10 quid for two sensors. He told me they, they were both working. Let's get outside. It's a bit horrible out there now. A bit dark and uh, grey. Looks like it could rain, so we don't know about this with this. So we'll get it done. We'll get the old one out and the replacement in. Let's get outside. Right, so we're back outside now at the vehicle. I say it might be a bit windy, so you'll have to bear the wind noise a little bit. This is the front O2 sensor. And to remove that, we'd have to take this cover off because there's a plug for it somewhere under there. You can see the wires going under, so. We'll have to take them two screws out and then uh, come down here. I've sprayed this up for the last couple of hours. It's just been soaking. So hopefully them penetrating fluids got down into them threads now. And the way you get these out, there is actually a special tool for these. It's actually a 22 mil deep reach socket. But as you can see, it has a slice down the side. And the reason for that is so you can get it on without with the cable there. So. You might be able to get a spanner in there, but I've tried and I can't. I've tried different uh, methods. 
you don't really want to start sticking um, adjustable spanners on there because you don't want to do no damage to this uh, nut. If you do round that off, you're going to give yourself a lot of trouble. So there's not a lot of working space in there. So for the sake of uh, getting the right tool, it's worth doing. You can get um, little socket sets of these for about 20 quid on uh, Amazon with all different sizes, but generically they're mainly a 22. So I'm going to get uh, myself a couple of sockets now. We'll remove this top cover and then we'll come down to there. Right then, so these two are actually an E10 and I can feel a bit of rain in the air as well, so that's not too good. So I'll just nip them off. Ratchet off. And the wind's picking up now. It's getting a bit cold out here to be doing this really. But these must. So the reason we're doing all this as well is because I'm going to be putting this one up for sale soon. Shouldn't really stick that on there. You don't want to ever stick stuff on there really because you don't want to bridge them. So yeah, I will be putting this up for sale soon. Yeah, it's had the cam belt done. We've done that last, uh, well, yeah, back end of last year. And it was on 106,700 then. And I don't even think the car's done much more since then. I think it might be on about 108. So it's done about 2,000 miles on this cam belt. Right, so where's it? Oh, the plug's coming back down here, look, because you didn't need to take that off. Oh, the plug's just there, then. So you don't need to take that off. You can scrap that idea. Let me bring you in and show you the socket. So the plug is actually down here, look but I thought it was going under this casing because it was coming up there behind the case. So you can't get away without taking that off. Uh, I'm just gonna unplug that down there now. This could do with a bit of cleanness, it's getting a bit green. So let me just unplug that and then we'll try and take this sensor out. Right then, so that's that unplugged. And I'm uh, just gonna get this now. Put that out there a minute. So this could be uh, quite a job to get out because they do get a lot of heat going through these obviously being in the exhaust. So we'll just have to bear that in mind. So right, that's that on now. Yeah. Oh, might have to get the breaker bar on that. Give me a minute. All right, so we'll just give ourselves a bit more uh, leverage. Failing that, we might have to get a bit of heat on here, so. Oh, that's got it. Lovely, so we'll take that back off now. It's just a matter of having the right tools. So we'll stick this uh, ratchet back on now. There we go. And just remember, when you're turning it, to uh, keep turning your cable with it as well. Yeah, so putting that penetrating fluid on earlier has really helped that because them threads are not as dry as I've uh, seen uh, other videos of people doing this. That come out re relatively well, actually. I thought it was going to be a lot more work than that. I mean, the plug, uh, it's the sensor itself doesn't look too... Uh, bad there's not a lot of carbon over it i've seen them before where they're fully black so i believe you can test these but i won't be going down that route i'm just going to uh, replace it and if i do get a code up then we'll have to do a bit more investigation inside the cat looks all right the honeycomb all looks to still be fine what actually i'm going to do is i'm just going to get some copper grease wait there Right then, so I've just been and fetched my other one. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, copper slip just in that uh, threads there. Won't hurt it. And I'll just stick a few on these threads here. There we go. So we can wind that back in now. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that come out actually, because I've seen these be uh, 
a bit of a nightmare. There we go. I say, just remember, keep twisting your, your cable when you're winding it in. Right, so we'll get our new, get our socket, stick that on the tighten. Don't go too mad, just uh, so it's clamped. And that is the new sensor fitted. And we can uh, stick that in there, put that back under there, and then we'll come just around this way. Right then, so that's all back together. Let's go in the car. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to try and start the car without erasing any codes to see if that engine management light goes off. So. All right, so we've still got an engine management light there. So sometimes the way you can clear and once you've changed your part, if you just take them out for a, a little drive, maybe three to five miles up the road, that will basically the ECU needs to reset itself so but I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do is we'll just go in the system so we need to put the ignition back on so we're going to clear the fault codes you have to bear with me without screening the reflections that's uh can't be helped are you sure you want to clear the fault codes yes I am so they've been successfully cleared, but there are still fault codes in the vehicle. Please check. Right then, it is a couple of hours later and I've had actually cleared up and uh, put everything away. Um, reason being I'm back is because the footage that I've carried on recording, I obviously didn't press record, so I didn't actually get footage of showing you that there's no actual dash lights on and on the top don uh, code reader, where it left off, I did say there was some codes left on the vehicle, and I am aware of them. That what that code is, it's um an air conditioning code for the aircon, because the previous owner decided that he didn't want the aircon and he actually deleted it. So it's actually an air conditioning code that's on the vehicle, and there's no way of uh, turning that off. So what I've come back to actually show you is just to prove that we've got no engine management light on now. So here we go, we'll go for a fire up. And as you can see, there's no engine management light there. And once I did actually get cleared up, I did take the car for a little ride down the road and it seemed faultlessly, it actually picked up very well. It drives spot on. And I've actually gained a bit of a bird crap since I was recording earlier, cause that wasn't there. Yeah, I just had to come back down cause I couldn't leave that out of the video. So anyway, I'm gonna, carry on where I left off and I'll see you in a minute right then folks I'm gonna leave it here for this quick little fast blast so that is how you get rid of uh, your PO 130 code and there's a few others there sensor one bank one is your first sensor just on your catalytic converter here so if you do get troubles with that uh, that is your that's where you want to be getting this sensor changed I say they are about between 50 and 60 quid online so and with buying a second round and one I was taking a chance but I say I knew the lad and he, he breaks these for a living so I didn't have no worries there if it was wrong he gave me two to take and uh, I could have always gone back down there and got another one and I say this will be up for sale soon so there won't be many more videos if any more videos on this Vauxhall Astra so this might be the last time you see it on the channel and I keep getting a lot of comments on the uh, Vauxhall Safira there the GSI nothing to do with any of the YouTube channels you won't see that on the channel it's not a channel car that is a, a private car that one anyway I'm going to leave it here and until next time see you about